and we actually had a full height, full materialization of a person that was fully recognized. Recognized by the detail of their dress and their mannerisms, recognized by the tone of their voice, and recognized also by the detail that was given to the recipient. I found it absolutely fascinating that what I'd read about in books actually happened in front of my eyes. Well, hi, um, my name is Arthur Plumpton. I've been a spiritualist for over 40 years now and I'd like to share a few of the things I've experienced in that time but uh, let me just go back I'm now retired I've been retired for a few years um, in, in my real life as it were my active life my professional life I was a technical manager for a food company a brewery company and more recently um, in a dairy company so I've got a wide background and it's obviously a scientific background so I do question things wherever it's possible. I think some of the, the fascinating things I've been involved with included a little bit of ghost busting in the north side of London um, where we went to a, a haunted, or oh, so we, we use the word haunted, um, where there's some spirit activity in a recording studio and it was a nice experience working in a recording studio and as always on these occasions you find a very logical explanation in terms of a spirit activity and the past use of the building so it all added up uh, I think probably the most dramatic uh, experience I've had uh, was certainly with Gordon Higginson Gordon Higginson, the president of the SNU from 1970 to 1993 when he passed, um, did frequent visits to Arthur Finley College and on one occasion we were there for his Physical Phenomena Week. And always throughout the week you're building up to what was probably the crescendo of the week which was a physical circle with Gordon in his cabinet. And on the day, of course, the necessary cleaning processes were went through and the um, pre-circle or pre-seance processes went on where he, he bathed and was inspected and all the security things went forwards in order to minimise the possibility of cheating. And that particular evening we were fortunate we were amongst the, the the first row of the group with about 90 people crammed into the library and watched in the reduced lighting of the day. We obviously sang songs which was traditional at that stage in order to build physical energy and then of course we had the direct voice from his helpers and eventually we got a physical apparition and you could see the ectoplasm form and flow and for the first time you, you're absolutely amazed you're gobsmacked that this is actually happening in front of your eyes but it was actually one of his best seances for a long time and we actually had a full height, full materialization of a person that was fully recognized, recognized by the detail of their dress and their mannerisms, recognized by the tone of their voice, and recognized also by the detail that was given to the recipient. I found it absolutely fascinating that what I'd read about in books actually happened in front of my eyes. Now, 
I've always said since that day once you've seen it there's no turning back it was there and I don't believe that there's any form of fraud and one has to always, always consider that and I believe it was it was in fact a genuine apparition spirit being physical phenomena call it what you like it was there one of the interesting things about that session is that we were obliged to not wear anything metal so watches uh, spectacles etc if they were metal were taboo they were left outside the sense room and that's his normal sense room was locked coming out of the um, room when the lights went up I noticed beneath my chair a biro now obviously there was no need to have a biro in that room and I questioned uh, with uh, Charles Sherratt afterwards how this could possibly be and he said well during the physical phenomena circles a great deal of energy is about and they just will use it as is to use it and, and make use of the energy and, and casual things of this nature happen such as biros being cast about but yes under my chair was a biro and it wasn't there at the start of the session so there's another indication that once again the energies were flowing that night and it was perfectly genuine I still see if you like in my mind's eye that I'm going to call it an apparition it really was a physical phenomena event and I still recall it and still it reminds me of the intelligence that spirit have and continue to use to try and help us in this world in our everyday machinations of the physical life so yeah an experience not to be forgotten and so on that's kept me moving forwards ever since okay thank you rather how's that sort of fit that's great huh? what was the um, apparition like in texture <coughs> wasn't able to touch it I was uh, we weren't had given permission to touch but it appeared to be in a visually it appeared to be a fabric an of normal fabric of the day um, it was coloured, I remember it was a, a relatively dark purple generally um, it was a dress, full length dress it was a, a, a sort of a, if you like a ball gown of the day a man or a woman then? Oh, female, oh, female. female, absolutely female and Yeah. did somebody recognise it? Or was oh it yes, a, it was recognised and accepted as I say with the as a relative as, as, a relative, yeah. as um, from the visual appearance and from the evidence that was given absolutely no question it was 100% accepted by the recipient and you were in the first or second row yeah right at the front right at the front yeah no, obs no obstruction to view at all uh, we were very fortunate um, and in that sense uh, the, first, the circle was created with um, if you like the, the friends and trusted ones in the first row working back to the people they didn't know on the back row. Uh, a very sensible arrangement in terms of provision of energy and trust to keep a stable environment. And did the apparition move around? It moved marginally but largely it was once the ectoplasm was flowing it was created on the spot and collapsed. So did it just appear or did it build out of a pile it, of ectoplasm on the floor? It built from the ground upwards and at the end of the session um, literally collapsed it almost if you like imploded in that sense it just sh collapsed shrunk and fell to the floor now could you see where it, the ectoplasm came from there was a trail back to gordon could you see him yes yes so he was visible in the, in the sec in uh, secluded area yep he was visible in cabinet yeah curtains were open were they yep so you could see gordon the whole time that you could also see the apparition yeah um, and it, you know, mentally, I cannot think of a way it could have been faked because no. it was too distant. It, it didn't. There was a clairvoyance that came with it, but the the image itself did not speak. What do you mean there was a? There was direct voice at the time. Oh, so that was coming out of Gordon's 
area. Well, well direct voice is going to come out from anywhere in the anywhere. room. So yeah. it wasn't coming out of Gordon's mouth. No, no. But you could hear the hear the information. Her voice. Uh, Ooh, now you're testing me. I can't be certain at this time. I mean, yeah, this was so well, thirty years ago. Yeah. So when did that happen, roughly? Then that would have happened um, <laughs> late eighties. Like 1980s. Yeah. 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 In Stansted Hall. In, in Stansted Hall. Room. Yeah. Witnessed by maybe 90 people. Yeah. Could they all see, do you think, at the back? Or you oh. saw at the front? Um, <coughs> it was all available for them to see. Uh, I cannot s put myself in their shoes, but there's no reason why they shouldn't be able to see. I don't think standing was permitted on that occasion. So they made me, you know, at the back row there might be some minor occlusion, but you know, it was all there. There's yeah. nothing, nothing deliberately shaded. So they prepared Gordon by washing and certain clothes. Yeah. Uh, he was checked out. Yeah. The room was checked out. Who, who were the people who did the check in? Oh, the people who did the check in would have been the AFC manager and his team. Um, there were nominated I think it was four people from the course who were considered to be independent and I, I don't know who they were today right. who actually did a check of the room and obviously a personal check. Um, AFC being Arthur Finlay College yep, starts that might fetch it. Yep. So you didn't actually have a second materialisation of anybody you knew? No. Was there a no. second materialisation? Um, no. Don't, don't recall there being a second materialisation. Prior to this we'd had the direct voice um, from different parts of the room so that, you know, it's quite obvious that um, direct voice was operating. Yeah. So the direct voice is a voice coming out of thin air from yeah. any part of the room? Yeah. I mean, um, I mean, the theory goes that a, an ectoplasmic voice box has been created either in a trumpet or in a corner of the room, and that's creating the sound. Do you see trumpets moving or, or anything like that? Not on that occasion. So the only other physical movement was the biro under your chair, things yeah. like that. Was Gordon Higginson tied down? He was... was he secured? I can't recall him being secured. I cannot be adamant on that at all. But the other room was illuminated. It, it was partially, yeah, dim light, dim, dim red. Light. Yeah. So that had he not been there, we could have seen, unless there was a cardboard cutout, of course, um, very lifelike. And was the apparition lit by the room's illumination, dim light, or did it provide its own light? Mm. From my memory, probably both, from my memory, um, and of course one has to acknowledge it's a long time ago now, yeah. and of but course... You've told me the story more than once uh, yeah. over the years, so yeah. uh, did, was it recorded anywhere, did you write it down? No, no. I, I personally didn't, um, yeah. whether anybody asked it I wouldn't know, um, but yeah, yeah. How I mean, long did, did the apparition stay? visible do you think? Mm, few moment, few minutes. Yeah, sufficient to have a, a conversation and be recognised. With, with his yeah. her relative? Yeah. yeah. Uh, did, did you speak to that relative afterwards? No I didn't. So yeah. You don't know who the lady was? Then? No. No. It would be interesting to find out if she was a famous opera singer or something. Yeah it would wouldn't it? Yeah. yeah. So going no, back to the ghost bus thing then, you went to a haunted yeah. property. What happened there then? Um, <clears throat> we actually went back several times. Um, we, we did the usual sort of preliminary interviews, etc. And we were, we, we then held, in the absence of the owner, we held a, a seance with our own team, which was about, I think, five of us. Um, and that was recorded at the time. Um, we established that there was a child who had had hard times in the 
1800 sometime I forget the exact period now um, and basically had a hard life uh, typical of a, a, youth, a youth of the north northeast London you can imagine what it would have been like is selling fruit from a barrow or whatever how did you establish that oh conversation uh, through the medium oh, there was a medium yeah. Yep. yeah so did anybody see the apparition of the uh, not as a, as a um, substantial apparition but it was seen clairvoyantly and uh, basically this boy was just hanging around and having a bit of fun was it recorded on any machinery or infrared or not in that sense, no, no. So it's those early days of ghost hunting has become oh. more technical. Then. Oh yes, yeah, yeah. 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 Subsequent periods. Um, but, yeah. but we had several sensitives present at the time, and they all had the same story, the, uh, the same impressions. Talking at different intervals, they yep. weren't, weren't together to hear. Oh, they were t there to hear each other they speak, yeah. uh, and they, uh, one, the story that they each gave was consistent with the other. But they were able to be present and hear the others. Yeah. But we, we, in those days, we went around with thermometers and hygrometers, and found nothing unusual in that. But we did uh, feel um. the cold, and we had to acknowledge that we believed that the owner of the area was, in fact, a sensitive who was attracting this this mischievous child. And we, we basically said, you know, go away, young man. <laughs> what kind of things was he doing there? Oh, he was, this was a recording studio, professional recording studio. So uh, you'd have kept the situation where the, the studio had been set up the night before to do the recording the next morning. And in the morning, all the controls had been altered. So all the slides had been moved. Behind the, locked doors. Uh, yep. Yep, absolutely. And of course, these doors were double doors because of the acoustic shielding. Um, and so that you do, people going through locked double doors, um, if they were real. Um, well, the physical evidence was the f moving of the dials yep. and the, where they'd been specifically locked in place the night before yep. by the last engineer. This is what we want to start with, yep. and it's moved when they go back there the next day. Correct. How often do you think that happened? Um, well, sufficiently sufficient number of times for them for to get the Ghostbusters in <laughs> for, yeah precisely I, I, and that's the thing it wasn't just once it was a regular sort of event and they call um, they eventually spoke to people at the college AFC um, and the secretary then contacted us um, to go up and investigate excellent interesting yeah uh, any any other things any lights when somebody's passed or anything like that Mm, no, but one of my f uh, very early experiences um, before I started to develop that my watch used to be one hour out. It used to be one hour late or one hour early, exactly one hour, and I could never understand it. And it happened on notable things like when the day my grandma died. And as I was living in the time in the north coast of Scotland, and they were in Lancashire, it was quite remarkable. And that was, for a while, that was quite a notable event. So whenever my watch was one hour out, I used to have to look around and find out what had happened. Wow. But that was when I was about 19, so I was going back a long way. <laughs> well, thank you very much, Arthur. Very interesting. Thank you. And no doubt, as you think about things, there'll be other things you can recall. Oh, yes. We'll, get, we'll try another session one day. <laughs>